quarter panel off. Red quarter panel on. Oh. It's pretty cold. But hey, we're driving. 10 out of 10, never done this in my life before and I think I'm killing it. All right, back at the shop. Uh, we are going to continue working on the quarter panel swap. So kind of summarize, I have the entire quarter panel from the red rust bucket sitting over there. It's waiting to get put on this car. But first, obviously I have to remove the damaged quarter panel. What is up guys? I wanted to interrupt this video real quick to explain a few things. Number one, sorry for the lack of content lately. I've been pretty busy and it's also been extremely cold outside. So working in the garage has been honestly a pretty low priority. So catching up on the content here now. And then number two, for those of you maybe new to the channel or don't follow me on social media, um, you may not be aware of what actually happened, but the reason why the quarter panel and the roof is so heavily damaged on the race car is not actually because of a wreck on track. It happened during our tow home from Coda earlier last year. And as you can see here, it was a pretty nasty wreck. The truck was completely totaled and the car ended up upside down on the trailer. Luckily, me and my dad, we were okay. We were uninjured. All I had was a few minor scrapes and bruises on my head. My dad, he was completely fine. The extraction process, it was pretty intense. First, getting the truck out was quite challenging. And then of course, the car and the trailer. But I will say the extraction crew, they were awesome because they were dirt track racers and they understood how important this car was to me. And they did the best they could to get the car out of the ditch without any additional damage. And I gotta say, they freaking killed it. Although there was significant damage, I was honestly shocked in the condition of the car. It was much better than I expected and I honestly thought the car was gonna be completely totaled. And then finally, after a long, brutal day, me and my dad, we finally made it home, just happy that we were unhurt. And then here you can see just how significant the body damage was. Quarter panel, roof, windshield, the entire front end, pretty much entirely smashed up. What do you guys think? You guys think it's gonna start? This corner right here took most of the impact. But yeah, the cage, I think did a good job saving it. But hey, let's see if this car's gonna start. And the crazy part about this whole situation, I checked the engine oil, it looked good. Battery still seemed to function properly. So I figured, let's just start this thing, see what happens. Channel five. <laughs> this car won't quit, neither will I. Honda, the power of dreams. So at this point, I started to repair most of the significant body damage, starting with the front end, the hood, the fenders, the bumper, the core support, and then I started hammering out the roof and the quarter panel to the best of my ability. And then a day later, I decided to take it for a little test drive just to see how the car felt on the road, make sure it tracked straight, didn't crab walk, or have any kind of funky characteristics of a bent up chassis. And everything seemed to be pretty decent. It's pretty cold, but hey, we're driving. No windshield. The miraculous thing about the car being upside down was that somehow it didn't lose any of its engine oil or transmission oil, coolant, anything. It all stayed within the engine, which was pretty surprising to me after being upside down for maybe, what, 10, 12 hours. The car doesn't really track straight. That's kind of concerning. I actually put it on the alignment rack after this and it wasn't that bad. The tow just slipped a little. It was fine. But hey, it still drives. So about one month later, with all the support from my friends, family, everybody who donated in the GoFundMe, we got the car mostly fixed up and ready for Watkins Glen without missing a single event. I couldn't have done it without all the support, so I seriously appreciate everybody that helped out. And of course, Watkins Glen was an epic event. So here's some race footage. <laughs>
So not only did we recover from this terrible accident and race one month later, but we also crushed it at this event and we got third place overall for the weekend. I couldn't have been more happy, especially after this comeback and being surrounded by all my friends, family, supporters, and loved ones. Never give up. So that is the story of what happened to the sedan. So now let's get back to present day. But you know, now that I have some free time, I really wanna make sure I repair the car completely. And there's been a few comments on some of my videos, people questioning why I'm even bothering repairing all this damage to a bootable race car, a car that has a very high probability of getting damaged again on track. And my answer to that is I have a lot of pride in presenting a clean, damage-free race car on track. As a builder, I want to build something that looks professional, looks cool, looks clean, and then as a racer, I want to pride myself in clean race craft, you know, not having any significant damage, you know, not crashing into other people, not crashing the car, period. It hasn't worked out well in the past with the hatch, but in my history of wheel racing, I've maintained a pretty clean race car. So with the sedan, I want to get this damage fixed so I can once again race a car that is 100% damage free and something that just looks professional. It's presented well, you know, it looks good for the sponsors, it's damage free, and it also kind of keeps me from taking unnecessary risk and potentially damaging the car again, hopefully. You know, you look at all the professional race teams out there, if they have any damage, they fix it. And then they show up to the next race with a completely damage free race car. It's just, in my opinion, the way that club racing should be like. And it's also the reason why I'm attempting all these repairs myself so I can learn, and then in the future, if something does happen, I can fix it again. I just pride myself in racing a cool, clean race car. Simple as that. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of put that out there, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of the video. So uh, I'm not really gonna share the whole process again. You guys kind of seen it. It's just a lot of drilling out spot welds. The tricky part about this car is I want to remove this door trim, and it's really hard. I try to do this once at a junkyard, and I completely mangled the trim piece. I'm gonna have to try to figure out how to do this because obviously I'm gonna have to cut through this section and then, you know, you have to separate this from the, anyway. But right now what I'm working on is where I'm doing my cut lines. I have it marked with tape right now where I need to cut and I'm leaving myself a little bit extra room, but I have a black line which is my best estimate as to where the cut is for that quarter panel. And I'm giving myself maybe a few more extra space. So when I start fitting up the new quarter panel, I can kind of keep trimming until it fits perfectly. Cause you cut too much, then you're gonna have a gap that you need to fill with weld, which is gonna be tough. Follow my cut here, got a few extra mil. And then that cut just basically follows this edge under the quarter panel. And then I'm going to basically continue the cut back here. We got this area split back here already. I've been working on the rear window, which is split. And I know in the roof video, I said that I was not going to remove the extra metal that the previous roof skin had. However, a slight change of plan with that because in order to get this piece off, I have to get the metal off from the previous roof to get below it to then get this panel off. So I am removing the small sliver that was left over from the previous roof. So I guess at the end of the day, I am doing things the right way. Got a little bit more work to do on the roof, get this molding off, do my cut, cut, do the cut here in the door jam, and then split the glue by the fuel door, split the glue here, and then I should be able to take this quarter panel off. So I'm hoping today I can get this quarter panel off so I can store the nice quarter panel on the car because it's it's taking up my couch spot. Where is my dog supposed to sit, you know? All right, so I got two tips and tricks for you guys. Number one, I bought this little angle finder on Amazon Prime. This is really cool. Um, basically, yeah, it just finds an angle for you. And it's got a digital readout, so you know exactly what angle you need to do. So for example, this guy right here, I'm basically able to measure it off the red car. You get a rough idea of the angle that I need to cut. So I know exactly what the angle is. And then yeah, you just apply it onto the car. There's your angle. So I did that over here in the quarter panel. And then I did the same thing right here because there's an angle that I have to cut. Trick number two, started removing the molding here that goes around the door frames. I'm gonna use 
two things. Number one, a heat gun. I know exactly where each of the clips are. So, heat on the clip. Once it's properly warmed up, I have a set of really nice trim removal tools. I got a full set here. I just gently pry it underneath like that and then just keep working it with heat with heat and then eventually it should pop out. My hope is that I can take this entire trim piece without bending it and also try to save as many of the trim clips as I can because I wanna put this trim piece back. And also I've already made the cut down here and then the cut in the back. So once I get this trim piece off, I can continue working on the cuts. So anyway, tips and tricks. I reckon it's gonna be a 50% chance success rate. So it is what it is. All right, that one was good. Undamaged. So yeah, exactly 50% success rate. I'll take it because I have a few clips that I can take off the red car on both sides. There, there's a few clips that weren't broken. So I'll have spare clips to use. Show you this cute little Milwaukee tape measure I got on Christmas. They're pretty nice, man. Nice and small and it's got millimeters as well. I normally work in millimeters, so nice to have. success rate. All right, another one successful, man. This is actually going really well. I gotta remove the doors. They're getting in the way. It's off. Not bad. Um, so most importantly, I got it off without bending this trim piece. It's still in good condition. And let's see how many clips I broke. So one, two, three, three clips. This one's kind of broken. Let's say three and a half clips. Um, I'll take that any day because I have three spare clips. I got one, one good clip right here. And then I have two, three, I got four extra clips. So that's good. So to get my cut, I lay down this masking tape and I cut it to the shape of the pillar and exactly where the cut is. And my plan is to just take this, all this masking tape off stick it on that and then I have my cut line. You get the idea. This is hard to do with one hand. And there you go. And then I can make a nice precise line where to cut. Next up, all of these spot welds, which is a lot. And I've been working on the roof section. So the roof is halfway split and I still have to do more here and then still need to do a cut right there. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'm going to go drill some spot welds for the next hour. All right, spot welds drilled out. Pretty easy. A uh, few tricks. Um, so step one, I hit it with the center punch. This is a nice center punch. It's got an internal spring in it, just messed up my table. So I hit it with the center punch and then I use a really fine drill bit and I just go a little bit in 
and that really helps guide the pin for the spot weld tool. And another tip that I learned is just go full speed. I used to kind of go, let's see, I used to kind of go like half speed, but full speed immediately kind of sets a groove and then you just go into that groove. So pretty nice. And then for any locations where the spot weld drill bit doesn't remove the whole thing, I use a little finger grinder. Pretty nice tool. You just file down the area where there's still some weld left. I got all of these done. I started doing my cut. Um, I have to find a smaller blade because if I use this big blade right here, it's going to cut through the metal that's behind this. So I don't wanna do that. So I wanna do a nice skim cut just to cut off only the outer material. And once again, I'm going above my cut line because I wanna put the red panel over this and then cut exactly where I need to cut it. One more cut to do here, and then I need to do my two cuts here and here. That should be this quarter panel off. And like the roof, which I wanna put on the wall, I might put the quarter panel on the wall too. I think that'd be pretty cool. There you go rough fitment obviously like i said it's not going to fit just right yet because there's a lot of cleanup i need to do on all the cuts so it's going to be a pretty long process to get this to fit right especially these cuts right here you can see still cut way more off of the uh, this structure back here as well yeah i mean that's basically that's basically Majority of the quarter panel replaced. Let's go. Oh, Ow. it's pretty sweet. Yeah, I'm excited to get this thing to fit right. Step one, let's clean up these edges a little bit and then get this to sit in there nice and flush. Still not the final fitment, but so far it is looking pretty good. We got the cut around the fuel lid door, pretty solid. A little bit of a gap here, but that's not the end of the world. I can, I can fill that in slowly with tacks. This cuts pretty much spot on. I have to trim just a little bit more on the white, but that fits up perfectly. But yeah, this thing fits right around the fuel door. It's gonna be perfectly aligned. Super happy about that. Just gotta make sure this here is uh, smooth. And then, uh, yeah, underneath the bumper, fitment's pretty good. Door jam area, still need to trim a little bit on the gray, 
but everywhere else it's looking pretty good. I'm waiting to finish this right here because it's it's not fully cinched down. Front's looking pretty close. Have a few more trimming to do here. It's fitting up really good back here. You can kind of see it pretty much lines up perfectly where the seam sealer was. Now, the only issue I currently have, as you can see right here, we're pretty much spot on, right? You can kind of follow this flange and this flange lines up perfectly there and then it goes down. So this section I know is good, but I'm having problems over here. Now, this is because when the quarter panel was damaged, this section looks like it was pushed in. So I'm probably gonna have to try to pull this gray material out to line up with the red quarter panel, but it's not terrible. It's manageable. Yeah, other than that, it's looking, it's looking really good. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy with this. So there we go. First bit of progress, major progress on the race car with the quarter panel repair. Overall, man, I'm, I'm really happy with how this is turning out. I haven't really made any big mistakes yet. So my life should be really easy when I have to weld everything up. Once again, got to do all the spot welds, weld on the A pillar, weld on the B pillar, go through the door jam here, and then finish up with the fuel door follow it underneath the bumper to the taillight bezel. And then that's basically it. But man, this quarter panel, it got destroyed. Look at all the, the dirt. Wow. So anyway, quarter panel off, red quarter panel on. So hopefully you guys find this somewhat interesting. I've never done this before. So like I said, I don't really know if I'm doing it the right way, but kind of figuring it out along the way. You know, that's the beauty of having your own projects is learning new skills. You know, especially if you have a race car, race cars don't have to be perfect, right? So it's kind of a good excuse to just try stuff on your own, save some money. I mean, going to a body shop, I'm sure this would have cost two, three thousand dollars just to do the metal work. Me getting the part car, the red one, for 400 bucks, and then just my time and labor, it's worth it to me. So, like I said, a few more finishing work, and then lay down some primer, and then start welding this up, and then move on to the next project, and then eventually clean out this damn car because it is, it's filthy. This, this poor old seat, I probably gotta get a new one, but, I didn't even bother covering the inside of the car just because it's going to get dirty no matter what. All right, January 1st, 2024. Uh, let's say goodbye to 2023. It was a pretty shitty year. Back to the quarter panel. We, well, I did a ton of work getting this quarter panel to fit almost perfectly. And I also went to Harbor Freight this morning, which is pretty cool. They were open on the first. And I got these pretty sweet, it's like clamps that you put between two pieces of metal and it holds it at the perfect section. They are these right here, uh, butt welding clamp sets. I also got some magnets and I bought a bunch of these cheap clamps right here, as you can see, those were like $4 each. I got eight of them and I'll use those to clamp it to the roof right now. Quarter panel fits about 99% perfect. Just cleaning everything up now. So I use uh, like a wire wheel, grinded down all of the spot welds that have like the race centers. And I'm going to do weld through primer next. And I'm going to basically lay it down everywhere where the red quarter panel will go on top of. So just want to protect, you don't want to have bare metal behind it. And I also still need to get this glue off because I do need to put um, panel bond there as well. Good progress. I might even get the whole quarter panel on today and, and start welding it. Um. Ooh, that stinks. Should be wearing a mask. All right, gotta let that dry. Gonna eat some dinner. But 
that man, that copper color looks pretty cool. I went a little above and beyond. I painted all of the stuff in between. Um, just figured throw some extra rust protection on there. It's just primer at the end of the day, but yeah, got all of the edges primered. I got, this is still a little wet here, but the spot where the quarter panel slides into, I sprayed kind of up and then down just to kind of get some stuff in there. Yeah, all of this stuff, this is gonna be welded. So not painting that just yet. Once I weld it, sand it down, then I'll spray it with primer. But all of this copper section will get covered up and you won't see any of it ever again. And uh, yeah, looks pretty cool. Seems like this is some good stuff, so. All right, next up, probably do one final test fit before I throw panel bond onto it because once, once that stuff sticks, that's it, you're committed. So let's let this dry for about 20 minutes. It's been a long day. Did Orange Theory this morning, played hockey in the afternoon, and dealt with this pretty much ever since 1 p.m. It's now almost eight. A lot of work, but it's pretty much ready to weld. Getting these edges to line up perfectly and, and shaving down enough to make sure everything lines up was probably the longest process of all of this. It's pretty much perfect, I would say. These panel uh, welding clamps are absolutely awesome. They hold this basically perfectly. Just like running my fingers across both panels, like I can't even tell there's a seam. So I think this is gonna work out really well. It's fitting perfectly around the fuel lid. All of these seams are pretty much perfect. I'm leaving a little bit of a gap in every weld so I don't have to put a lot of heat into it. I can just like tack them and then the weld will basically go in between the gap. So less heat, less warpage. The B pillar is looking pretty good, lines up perfectly. The A pillar, freaking spot on. Look at that, dude. <laughs> Look at that, man. Really happy with it. Yeah, I did a uh, copper weld through primer, the U-Paul stuff, really nice stuff. We'll see how it holds up with the welding. So I did all of the weld surface on the chassis and then I didn't show it, but I basically sprayed the entire back side of this panel. So all along those spot welds up top, even like for these little holes, just to make sure uh, this panel doesn't get any rust. It's nice and protected. My goal today was actually to start welding this on, but I'm going to kind of pause so I don't rush it. And I want to mount the trunk, the taillights, the bumper, the filler piece. I want to mount all of this rear section just to make sure the gaps are good. And that's exactly what I did off camera. I mounted the trunk, taillights, the filler piece under the taillights and the rear bumper. And the results were honestly amazing. The panel gaps were freaking perfect, especially by the trunk area. The taillight lined up perfectly. Everything just looked flawless like it came from Factor like that. And of course, Senna gave the nod of approval. I'm so happy with the progress. I'm, I'm 10 out of 10, never done this in my life before and I think I'm killing it. So hopefully you guys enjoy the process and maybe feel inspired to try new things yourself that you might not be skilled at. So anyway, catch you guys in the next video. Um, we'll probably be welding on the quarter panel. So see you later.